Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Kitty, uh, <laughs> what's your hurry? Uh, I'm late for work, Matt. I should have been at the Long Branch an hour ago. I was just over there. The place is full of nothing but loafers. Why, there isn't a dollar in the crowd. <laughs> I never saw a loafer yet. It didn't have at least a few pennies hit out somewhere. <laughs> Maybe you're right, Kitty. Of course, sometimes you have to pull his boots off to find it. <laughs> That's all in the day's work. Mr. Dillon! Uh, who's that with Chester? Yeah, I don't know him. Look at the spread of that man's feet, Matt. He looks like a buffalo. <laughs> they are pretty big, all right. Uh, I'll see you later, Matt. Okay. Good luck, Kitty. Uh, Mr. Dillon, uh, this here is Mr. Uh, and Miss Jollops. Uh, how do you do? You. Uh, the Mr. Jollops Rod. has bought themselves an old Mather place down at the head of Salt Fork. Oh, uh-huh. well, that's about 60 miles south of here, isn't it, Mr. Jollops? Well, that's what they tell me, Marshal. Of course, we ain't never been there. We're on our way now. Well, you'll have a good neighbor down there, Miss Jollop. Bob Oren lives only about 10 or 15 miles from you. Well, uh, that's what they wanted to see you about, Mr. Dillon. What? Well, we met this here Bob Oren right here in town today, Marshal. Oh, did you? Now, see, we paid good money for that place. But, uh, well, my wife and me, we were about to give up going down there. All we've been hearing about that country. And we met this Oren fellow down the Santa Fe Depot today. Now, he said it was all lies. And they want you to tell them the truth, Mr. Nolan. Yes. What? Uh, the truth about what? About them Indians, Marshal. Them Comanches. Now, everybody but Bob Oren. Everybody says that country down there is just full of them. And he lives alone. He's got no woman with him. But me, uh, I didn't come west to get captured by no Indians. I've read about that bad what they do to women. I don't intend to expose my wife to nothing like that, Marshal. We want you to tell us the truth, Marshal. You're the law here, and we'll believe you. Well, that was Comanche country, yeah, but it isn't anymore. I doubt if a single Indian's been seen down there for two or three years. They're all on the reservation now. Is that the truth, Marshal? You swear that's the truth? Well, you can go out to Fort Dodge and ask the Army. They'll tell you. No, no, we will believe you. Well, you can believe Bob Oren. He's lived there quite a while. All right, then. Laura? Well, let's get going, Will. I'll brave it. All right. Uh, I've got a ride down your way in a few weeks. Uh, <laughs> if you don't mind, I'll come by and say hello. Oh, you'll be it's welcome, Marshal. Pleased to see you, Marshal. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, goodbye. Ain't you taking a little too much responsibility for that, Mr. Dillon? Now, what do you mean, Chester? Well, how can you say every Comanche in the country is on that reservation? I think they're taking a big chance. Maybe Bob Oren ain't seen none, but that don't mean nothing, not when it comes to Indians. There are chance in the weather, too, Chester. And they know it. Yeah, maybe so. But I'm glad it wasn't me told them. <laughs> Uh, 
I thought the old Mather place was right in them cottonwoods, Mr. Jones. Yeah, it was. Well, then the jollops must have moved it. I sure don't see no house. Look closer. Yeah, there's something there. Yeah. Why, it's all tore down. It's just a heap. Mr. Dillon has been burned. They've had a fire out here. Looks that way. I don't see nobody around. No. Let's have a look. Come on. There sure ain't much left, is there? Well, there's this. It's an arrow. Uh-huh. Comanche. Oh, and there's another one. Half burned. Oh, my goodness. Hey, look at there, Mr. Dillon. Somebody made a grave. It's fresh dug, too. But it's only one grave. It's not very deep, either. Just a few inches. You gonna dig it up? I gotta find out who it is, Chester. Oh. You mean if it's Mr. Jollop, then they took her alive. That's right. Yeah, but Comanches wouldn't bury nobody, Mr. Dillon. No, they wouldn't. It's her. She's been scalped. Oh, ain't that awful? Yeah, we'll have to bury her proper, Chester. Then we'll ride over to Bob Oren's. Maybe they got him, too. Yeah, well, where's Mr. Gallup? You think they took him prisoner? I don't know, Chester, but look sharp now. We don't want him to get us. You've heard Bobby Haggard whistling it on radio and television. Right now, a country-style version. Okay, partners? Packs more pleasure. Packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Time to the rail here, Chester. All right, sir. Well, Bob Warren, pretty lucky. Doesn't look like them Indians have been anywhere near here. Well, from the tracks of the Jollops, there was a small party. Yeah, well, I know, but that wouldn't keep them from coming over here. Only a big party will hit every ranch, Chester. Small one attacks and then rides on for miles before trying it again. Now, wait a minute. What? Well, there's footprints. Well, there's lots of footprints all over. Yeah. Come on. I guess Arn ain't home. He's got to be. Didn't you notice that saddled horse in his corral? You gonna walk right in? Oren. Hey, Oren. Marshal Dillon. Oren. I told you there ain't nobody here, Mr. Dillon. I'll look in the kitchen, sir. He's here, Chester. Why, it's 
torn. He's been scalped, too. A bullet hole in his chest. Well, them Comanches was here after all. I don't know. You don't know? Well, they scalped him, didn't they? Did you ever hear of Indians killing a man and not setting fire to his place? No, I guess I never did. There are three horses in that corral. Even drunken Indian wouldn't leave a horse behind. Yeah, but he's been scalped. Anybody with a sharp knife can scalp a man, Chester. You don't have to be an Indian to do that. What do you mean? Outside those tracks I stopped to look at. They're made by a man wearing boots. About the biggest boots I ever saw. You thinking of Will Jallop? Those tracks aren't more than two days old, and Bob Oren hasn't been dead any longer than yeah, that. Yeah, but Jallop wouldn't come scalp a man. The Comanches killed his wife, Chester. We don't know what happened to him, but my guess is he's alive. The Indians don't take male prisoners his age. But that don't say he done this to Bob Oren. Chester, there are only two people who told Jallop and his wife they'd be safe out here. Oren was one of them. Jallop's wife gets killed, he escapes somehow, and comes here to take his revenge. He did to Oren what the Comanches did to her. That's awful hard to believe, Mr. Dillon. Well, he wouldn't be the first man driven crazy with grief. Well, maybe... And but... if it's true, I'm the next on his list. When we get back to Dodge, I got an idea Jallop will be there waiting for me. <laughs> Hello, Kitty. Sit down. Oh, any coffee left in that pot? Sure. And here's an extra cup. Ah, oh, thanks. You look tired. Well, we rode all night, Kitty. I haven't been to bed yet. Uh, no, Chester came in the long branch. No luck, huh? Uh, not so far. You could be wrong about him, Matt. Jollop might be in Colorado by now. Yeah, maybe. He might have killed Bob Oren, sure. But it's kind of hard to believe he'd come to Dodge looking to scalp a gun baron U.S. Marshal. Well, I'm beginning to think maybe you're right, Kitty. Maybe I made a mistake about the whole thing. But somebody killed Oren. Yeah, they sure did. Guess I better go out there and have another look around. With all those Comanches on the warpath? I know there are only three or four of them, Kitty. Some young braves who jumped reservation last week. How do you know that? I reported the whole business to Major Honeyman at Fort Dodge. He told me about it. Well, even so, isn't he doing anything about them? Yeah. He put a company of troopers in the field. Sure. All they'll do is kick up a lot of dust. Probably. Well, Kitty, I think I'll turn in for a couple of hours, I... I need some sleep. That's the best idea you had yet. When Chester comes in, will you tell him I've gone to my room? Huh? Yeah, I'll tell him that. See Kitty Chester? Uh, yes, sir, I did. I come in just after you left. I've been trying to catch you before you got to your room here. Oh, what is it? Did you find him? Uh, no, sir. No. Uh, what I want to know is, could I get some sleep, too? Well, of course, Chester. I thought you understood that. Mm. Well, then I'll go back to the office and lay down there. All right, I'll come by later tonight when I wake up. Huh? All right, sir. I'll see you then. Yeah. gun there on the table. This here is a mighty short barrel shotgun, Marshal. I stole it off of Bob Oren, and it's loaded with buckshot. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting hours. Busted in the back window, if that's what you're wondering. No, that's not what I'm wondering, Jollop. What? I'm wondering how you got away from those Comanches. 
seen them coming. Climbed up one of them big cottonwood trees. They looked. They never found me. You mean you left your wife to fight them? I left her all right. You betcha I left her. Coward. Terrible, them Indians. It was terrible. But I fixed Bob Oren for it. He told me it was safe out there. Now I'm going to fix you. I'm going to take you right down by the river, Marshal. I'm going to fix you there. You just make one move on the way and I'll leave you in two big pieces. Now you walk. Say, where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your car? Getting ready for dinner? Oh, I see. Just relaxing in your favorite easy chair. Well, I'd say you're in a good spot right now to really enjoy a Chesterfield. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason. A cigarette made better and packed better... Smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> Marshal, it is pretty down here, isn't it? All them nice cottonwood trees. My wife liked them cottonwood trees out to our place, Marshal. She liked them a whole lot. Jollop killing me isn't going to get your wife back. And she was scared, Marshal. She was more scared than me, even. And I'll never get over it. Watching them painted devils ride up. I ever see another Indian, I... I'll kill myself. I'm still shaking. You weren't shaking so much you couldn't run off and leave your wife. You betcha I left her. I couldn't stand the sight of them savages. Well, that don't matter now. See here, Marshal, got a knife in my belt. Good long knife, and you know just what I'm going to do after I shoot you. Wait don't a minute, you? be quiet. Don't you tell me to be quiet, quiet I, I said. Listen. What? There's something in that clump of elder on the river bank over there. I don't see nothing. They're gone. You can't see them now, but they're out there. Good. Wait a minute. They'll move any minute now. Who will, Marshal? What? what are you saying? Indians. Who? There are three of them. They were standing right against the river. Oh, no. No, not in the end. Watch, right there. You see one of them standing up. You see him? Where? Tell me, where is he? Shoot him, Jollop, shoot him. Yes, I will. I, I can't see him. Let... <coughs> no. Give me the gun, Jollop. Hit me, Rasher. You was fooling. Let go of it. No, I... <coughs> My chest hit me in the chest. Couldn't get your finger off the trigger. Got to die. Bleeding all over. I'm sorry, Jollop. Oh, I shot myself. I shot everybody, Marshal. I'm the third one. The third.
third. Oh, I ain't a coward like you think. I'm scared of Indians, but I didn't run off to leave my wife to them. Not alive, I didn't. You mean you shot her before they got there? You killed her? It was terrible, Marshal. She begged me to. Begged me. Before they could get her. Ain't been right since. Not till now. Now I know I've done wrong. Killing Bob aren't trying to kill you. I, I've done wrong. But I'm all right now, Marshal. I'm all right now. Jollop. Yeah, I think maybe you are now. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, a horse and buggy frontier doctor was about the most useful and beloved citizen in any community. But next week, Dodge learns that a man has been killed and that it was Doc Adams who killed him. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. America's medical schools urgently need your help. Join the National Fund for Medical Education today. Write Medical Education, Box 313, New York City. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Only with L&M. Can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip? So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Join us again next week for another...